All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Time for the blurbs. Let's jump in. We're going to try and make these quick because we had a lot on this podcast. Uh, NFL football is back. Did you watch the? Uh, did you watch the whole uh, nope. pff, Hall of Fame game? Not not one second. You didn't watch one second of the nah. Hall of Fame game. No, I went out, man. Where did you? Where did you go out? Don't, don't worry about where I went out. Yeah, I went I, out. Where did you go out that they didn't have the game on? I went to Texas Day Brazil. They didn't have the game on. You didn't Texas invite Day me to Texas Day Brazil, man. No, sir. I am hurt. No, sir. I am upset. That was a special, special thing. <laughs> very special meeting. All right. I understand. Everybody finally got to see Lamar Jackson, the quarterback. He was 4 out of 10 for 33 yards with a touchdown and a pick. Eight rushes for 25 yards. It wasn't the best first impression. Uh, Robert Griffin the third. I know you didn't watch, but he was pretty fantastic. Uh, I think they will probably keep him as the backup for this season, partly to help mentor Lamar Jackson. How, how do you feel about that? I think nothing that happened in the Hall of Fame game is relevant at all. Okay. They will play four more preseason games, and when it's all said and done, RG3 probably won't have a job with the Ravens. Okay, okay. I can get with that. Uh, next up, Jim Harbaugh does not eat chicken. Have you seen this? I have seen this. He's right. my guy. Former Michigan and current UCLA quarterback Wilton Spate revealed that Harbaugh told him not to eat chicken because, quote, it's a nervous bird. So Spate said he thinks some types of sickness uh, or some type of sickness injected its way into the human population when people began eating white meats instead of beef and pork, which is funny because pork is a white meat. <laughs> pork is not a white meat. That's, That's absolutely not true. What? It, it's absolutely not true. Pork is not a white meat. The pork that you get in a grocery store that is white, you're talking to a barbecue master. Okay. That, that, that you get in a grocery store is white has been so bred out, but it is absolutely a red meat. If you get a pure Duroc pork butt, it's all red. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll roll with that. So Spate said, uh, Spate said that Harbaugh believes this 100%. What are your thoughts on this? I love it. I like the concept. Um, I love my – you know this. I love – Les Miles. I love Steve Spurrier. I love Mike Leach. I love weird, quirky guys that are totally comfortable in their own skin. Harbaugh is that. It makes sense. I'm in. <laughs> I'm not a, hard to sell. A, a chicken is a nervous bird. You need to be eating cows and everything right. else that Eat will stand up for themselves. Like, by God. <laughs> Donald Trump called LeBron James dumb on Twitter, and people lost their minds. So the tweet says, LeBron James was just interviewed by the dumbest man on television, Don Lemon. He made LeBron look smart, which isn't easy to do. I like Mike. That was the tweet. Any thoughts on this? Yeah. Um, You can't go on any type of media whatsoever and tell a guy who literally just started this school and doing the things that LeBron James is doing, regardless of what you think of him basketball-wise, and call him dumb and not get completely blasted. Now, Melania did come out and, and praised him afterwards, which is good on her. Uh, I don't think that the president should be in the business the, the of... The voice of reason. Yeah, it, the, the president should not be in the business of Twitter wars with, with athletes. Or any celebrities. Any celebrities. I All agree. Of this. He now, I do... I, I will say this. LeBron has talked trash about Donald Trump for two years. That's but you don't get but to run for president and not be criticized. I com- I'm with you 100. percent It is strange times that we are living in. No, it's, very it's, strange it's times. Ridiculous. If this was just celebrity against celebrity, yes, then that's one thing. Before he sat in that house on Pennsylvania Avenue, we're having a completely yeah. different conversation. Trump needs to realize that once you are in that chair, yep. you have to be bigger than this. So doing that was just... LeBron James might be one of the classiest, best individuals walking the planet right now. Yeah. And and if you're going to blast him after what he has been doing, dude, you're you're just... You're going to come out on the wrong side of that in history. Yeah, I agree. Uh, DJ Jeffries decommitted from Kentucky this week. Local story. Yep, local story. Uh, DJ Jeffries plays at Olive Branch High School, or played at Olive Branch High School. He still plays. He's a junior. Is he's that a right? senior this year? Yeah. Oh, he's you're not, right. Oh, he's yeah, not he'll going still be now. He's, yeah, he's, I'm he's, sorry. He's you're right. Uh, look, he plays for Penny's. Uh, well, used to be Penny's 
uh, AU team, team. Correct. But Memphis fans need to kind of pump the brakes on this Penny versus Cal rivalry a little bit. Like, getting Jeffries, who, who actually played for Penny's AAU team, doesn't really make this a rivalry, in my opinion. He's Am gotta, I wrong? He, no, yeah. He's got to go into an out-of-state situation for both of them, head-to-head with a kid that has no connection to either one of them. And and if he wins one of those, yeah. like, if yeah. he brings and, and Matthew DJ Hurt. Jeffries, DJ Jeffries has, re- like, family relations. I'm a, I, I got a little bit of insight, not a lot, just enough to, like, say some stuff. Sound like I'm intelligent. <laughs> Enough but, to talk trash. But there's a <laughs> really good chance it's all wrong. Um, I, I've got a little bit of inside information from some friends that are actually close to DJ Jeffries and all these AAU guys from Memphis. Um, and so originally I was the one guy saying, this guy's going to stay with Cal. He's not leaving because he, I, I heard all the stories about how hard Cal works to take care of him and, 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 and make him feel special and, and be around. But – it seemed like all his buddies that he plays AAU ball with have just been owning so much to where. If you go look at his Instagram, that's it. That's where it's all like, happening at yeah. too. If you that's go look at his Instagram, you can see at. like Alex Lomax, all these other guys these that are going guys. to Memphis are all over him about go Tigers. And it, and and it used to else. be him shutting them down, him ignoring them, and now it became slowly him responding. Him laughing and now decommitment and and then we'll see just, what happens. We're all just assuming he's going to be committed to, to to Penny. Probably, probably so. All pretty, right, pretty fun around here. Blurb number four: Jalen Hurts spoke out at Alabama's media day on Saturday, saying he is not leaving because he graduates in December, but showed he's not really happy with how the coaching staff handled the quarterback competition between him and Tua. This is the quote: All right, coaches can't control this situation. They dictate who plays, but as far as the other variations to it, they don't control it, honestly. Like I said, this whole spring, ever since the game, national championship game, they kind of wanted to let it play out, and I guess didn't think it was a thing to let it die down like there wasn't something there. But that's always been the elephant in the room. For me, no one came up to me the whole spring, coaches included. No one asked me how I felt. No one asked me what was on my mind. No one asked me how I felt about the things that were going on. Nobody asked me what my future held. That's that. So now it's like when we try to handle the situation now, for me, it's kind of late. It's too late. The narrative has already been created. Let me get your thoughts on this, and then I'm going to jump in. So this is my problem with Nick. He came out, and, oh, I I talked to to Hertz, and he's totally bought in, and he's not leaving, and he's going to be a part of this team. And that was the story Nick pushed out a couple of weeks back. Well, that and, was it, and, it. Was just last week. Yeah, whenever. Yeah, yeah. And, and so two weeks ago, he was saying the reason that Jalen had the problem initially is because Nick Saban came out and said, "Well, I don't know if he's going to be here for the Louisville game." But Jalen had told him in June, "Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere." But it, to to defend Saban, he also had a quarterback two years ago in Blake Barnett that was committed to the program, said he was going to be there, and then left in the middle of September when Jalen Hurts got the job. But that guy, <laughs> Nick knew exactly what was going on. He knew that they hadn't talked to, Jay, uh, to, to Jalen. He knew that Jalen's gone as soon as he graduates, absolutely, and, and that's that. What Nick was doing is extremely deceitful and painted Jalen into a corner to where if he's anything but professional and, and I'm going to support Tua and, and we're one unit in the quarterback room – then Jalen's the problem. And that's exactly what Nick did a couple of weeks ago at Media Day. And Jalen's saying, hey, 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 let, I'm not going to be a problem, but but I'm also not happy either. Let's not make it sound like we're all BFFs and I'm grooming this young boy. Like, like I want the starting job. I took us to two national championships back-to-back, think I've earned it, and now I'm having to compete with a guy that played two quarters of football that – Nobody had tape on. Nobody was prepared for, and it was real easy to hit him with shock and all. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. I think what Nick did is one of the reasons why people outside of Alabama hate Nick. It's not because they beat him up all the time. He takes these players and he paints them into corners to where they look like assholes all the time, and I don't like that. He is a grown man, and he controls the narrative, and if you step out of line, you're wrong. 
and I just don't like it. Tell me, tell me about this. Uh, the, the quote about no one came up to me the whole spring, coaches included. No one asked me how I felt. No one asked me what was on my mind. No one asked me how I felt about the things that were going on. Nobody asked me what my future held. Nobody asked it's, him what his future held. This isn't it, just but, about his feelings. Nobody came up and talked to him at all, which means they have totally moved on from him being the quarterback. But, it, no, I don't buy that at all. I, I think it is still a competition. Here's the deal. Tua was out the entire spring with a broken bone in his throwing hand. Why and would that was, nobody be talking to him then? Because at that point, he had the opportunity to go out and not have to compete at all, just go and play. Why would you have to talk to him about how he feels about the situation? I don't he think signed they a scholarship agreement. There's nothing to talk about. I don't think they're talking to him at all. I think he's given you examples of things that he wanted to talk about, but I don't think any communication was between him and any of the coaches. And see, and that's I, I would love that's to have problem. asked him more is, questions. Is, 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 you know as good as I do – if there's any type of communication whatsoever and there's something on your mind, then you have an opportunity to get that information out there to tell them. But if there's no communication at all, I believe they are treating him like one of these players that are hurt. And once you're, once you're on the training table, you're not on the practice squad, you're, you're dead to us. I don't think anybody's talking to him at all. I That's, think they have you, completely you might be moved right. on. And, and, and this is – this is the problem that people have with this sport. This is my problem with the transfer rules and all this other stuff is you as a coaching staff can completely ruin an entire year of eligibility for this young man strictly because you're done with him. You've moved on to the next thing. You don't want to compete against him. So you're just going to back him into a corner and say, you sit over here for a year and then you can go somewhere next year after you graduate. But then you've got one year to do something and that's it. That's yeah. my problem. Now, I mean, you, you have said before, football is the ultimate meritocracy. So, if Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback, he will be the starter. I have no doubt about that. I don't know that. I think they've already moved on. And, I, and the reason I say that is because I think these guys are so different in the way they quarterback. Nick knows that you can't put together two completely different game plans. You can't put together two completely different offenses and hope that if this guy wins out – then we'll run this offense, and if this guy wins out, we'll run this one. You can't prepare that way. Yeah. There's no way. And you can't put together an offense for Jalen and throw Tua into it. It worked in a national championship when you had a team that had no film on a kid, weren't prepared, weren't expecting that at all. That was an ultimate kamikaze move. We're going to lose this game if we don't do something drastic. They did something drastic, and it worked out. Do you, do you think that they will both play against Louisville? No. You don't think so? No. I think both will play the, against Louisville. The only way they both play against Louisville is flat out, we're, we're making sure Jalen plays four games because we want that red shirt off him because that way if he chooses to go in conference in the SEC, then we don't have to worry about playing against him but for one year. I don't know about that. I, I, I think, I think they both get think, to play. If you think Nick Saban isn't above that, you're wrong. You're just wrong. That guy's We've not We've talked about anything. that on this podcast, about whether or not he would do that. Burn that. Burn it. He's going to burn it. There's no doubt in my mind he's going to make sure Jalen leaves Alabama in December. And only has one year. year eligibility. I could see it. I could definitely see it. I don't know. There, there's a lot to uh, – Still a whole lot to figure out in fall camps. Fall camps just opened up. So we'll see what happens. The only but, uh, way Jalen plays is if Tua's injury is more serious than we think. That's it. We are uh, – got to tell you, we're not used to seeing this coming out of Alabama football players. It is uh, It is very interesting. I think that's why I grabbed a lot of headlines. So yeah. you, you don't normally have somebody going against the status quo. <sighs> All right. We're, uh, we're going to move off of that. Uh, you know what? I think – we're just going to wrap it up. Wrap it up. We're wrapping it up. All Great right, you, show. You guys know what to do. Go check out the podcast, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play. You're already listening to it. Or you're watching us on YouTube, one or the other. But uh, YouTube.com slash Winning Cures Everything. Uh, iTunes.com slash, uh, well, maybe we don't have one of those. Right. I don't know. Leave us a review on iTunes. Yep. Five stars. Leave us a written review. Uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, or Google uh, Podcasts now. All that wonderful stuff. So go check those out. WinningCuresEverything.com is the site mybookie.ag the best online sports book out there promo code is wce50 go check that thing out it's a 50 percent deposit bonus which means basically you put in 100 bucks they're gonna give you 50 you put in 50 bucks they're gonna give you 25 etc etc 
goes on from there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. Or you can follow both of us combined at Winning Cures. You can also get us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything. That's going to do it. So we will be back next week with Big Ten previews and Memphis predictions and uh, and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, we want to thank Muhammad Masakwai for being on the show. We want to thank John Lacombe from the Westlight Pirates for being on. It was a long one, but a good one. Thank you, guys. Later. We'll see you next week.